All right. Thanks, Brett. All right. Well, welcome, guys, to our weekly update call. Um, we'll provide a little bit of information on data and what the numbers say, and then talk a little bit about vaccination numbers, um, and then share with you uh, what we know that is uh, new, and then answer any questions that you might have. So, um, Jordan, if you're on, I'll turn it over to you, and you can uh, provide the data. Sounds good. I'm here. I'm just going to start sharing my screen. So you're looking at the My Safe Start County data right now. We have our first ever risk level A with Lake County. Uh, Crawford, Manistee, and Mason are in risk level B. Kalkaska, Masaki, and Oceana are in risk level C. And Mikasa, Nuego are in D. And Wexford is our one county left in E but I will expect to see that changing soon um, as some of our cases from Wexford have switched counties within the past couple of days. So they had their address listed as a hospital, but those addresses have been updated. So some have gone into our counties and a few have left our jurisdiction completely. So we will expect to see them change as well. Um, we reported 58 new cases from Friday at 3.01 p.m. until yesterday at 3 p.m. There were 151 new cases over the past week, and the week before that we had 207 cases, so we have seen a 27% decrease in cases in the past week. Uh, the cases from the past week were identified as being household contact, school cases, uh, social gatherings, religious services, long-term care residents, healthcare workers, and pre-appointment and inpatient testing. Our total number of jurisdiction-wide cases as of yesterday at 3 o'clock was 11,577. Cases by county as of yesterday are Crawford with four, 546, Kalkaska 551, Lake 340, Manistee 746, Mason 1,135, Macosta 1,900 with Ferris State reporting 600 cases, Masaki 616, Nuego 2,649, Oceana 1,779, and Wexford 1,315. In the past week, there were three deaths reported and 304 people who recovered. Yesterday, there were five positive inpatient cases at Munson Healthcare Cadillac, zero at Munson Grayling, zero at Munson Manistee, zero at Spectrum Health Big Rapids, three at Spectrum Health Gerber Memorial, and zero at Spectrum Health Ludington. Next, I will share our vaccine table with you. So this is as of Sunday, February 21st. We had given 33,174 vaccines with 12,318 of those being second doses. And according to the state dashboard, 55,957 vaccines have been given within our counties and 19,898 of those were second doses. So um, District Health Department number 10 still continues to give around 59% of the total vaccines within our counties. Are there any questions? Any questions for Jordan on any of the data? <clears throat> All right, thanks, Jordan. All right, so we do continue to uh, move forward uh, with contact tracing and case investigation um, for those positive cases that come in, as well as vaccination. Vaccination clinics tend to be the other big thing that we are currently involved in. Um, last week, we did have uh, clinics in our county. We had clinics uh, on Monday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then some smaller clinics on Saturday in some of our counties. This week, we did um, pull back a little bit to give uh, our staff a, a bit of a break, as well as to retool um, some of our scheduling processes. And so we will be having uh, first dose clinics this Friday um, in all of our counties, and then um, some clinics on Saturday in um, five of our uh, counties. 
So we will be looking, those first dose clinics, we'll be looking at about trying to get about 300 individuals into those if possible. Saturday will will be a little more um, varied. Um, beginning then next week, um, we will look at adding in another um, newer group, that, those being the uh, food processing facilities and agricultural sites that will be um, moved into the current eligibility for vaccination. And so in our counties, pretty much, you know, we're, we're looking at those facilities that tend to be down in Nuevo County, Oceana County, and in Mason County to some extent. So um, supposedly we're hearing from MDARD that they will be providing us with a list of those sites, which if that, if, if that holds true, that will make it a little easier because then we'll know specifically who we have to contact who's eligible and, and who's not. So we're still waiting on that. Um, but we are gonna we are gonna reach out and, and work with um, two sites kind of as a as a pilot to see how this goes. One will be in Oceana County, one will be in, in Nuevo County. And so we'll be starting uh, that process. Um, that there is no new additional vaccine coming in for those sites. So that vaccine will be um, you know part of what we are allocated. We did see um, for this current week that we're in an increase in the amount of vaccine that we did receive. Um, so for this current week, we did receive a total of um, 3,510 first doses of Pfizer vaccine. We also received um, 1,170 second doses of Pfizer vaccine. And then we saw uh, 900 uh, first doses of Moderna vaccine. And so, um, as of the 15th, Pfizer vaccine, up to the 15th of February, Pfizer vaccine, a tray of Pfizer vaccine equated to 975 doses. Um, that now, because we're finding that you're getting a sixth dose out, out of, almost out of every vial, um, that uh, CDC has changed that volume allotment to um, equal at 1170 from each, from each vial. So, um, that's why you're starting to see it. You know, that's why the the difference in Pfizer um, Pfizer numbers. So moving forward, um, what we're hearing from the state is that they are expecting that that vaccine levels are going to continue to increase. Um, I was on a call, state call before this, where um, they had indicated that they they had uh, allocation limits already set for this week or for next week, and and were set to release those, and then found out that CDC was going to allocate an additional almost about 30,000 doses of Moderna vaccine. So, um, you know, they've got to go back now and, and kind of uh, tweak those allocations a little bit. So hopefully, you know, our hope is that we'll still know before Friday what our allocation is going to be for next week so that we can uh, plan accordingly. Um, what our, our thinking with vaccination clinics are that we will do clinics on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Wednesdays and um, Fridays, hopefully being more first dose clinics. Saturday, uh, second dose clinics, we can get uh, a lot more people through quicker in a second dose clinic because it does move a little bit um, more faster. Um, we're also looking at beginning the process of moving our Friday clinics our first, these first dose clinics where we're expecting larger uh, numbers of people through to offsite locations. And part of this is in preparation for, um, you know, what we anticipate will be a, a release of additional vaccine here in the near future. So we need to get in the, we need to get in the practice of, of operating offsite clinics um, and, you know, all of the issues and logistics that will go along with them. So that is what we are um, planning. Um, for our clinic operations. Um, Jordan had shared the, um, you know, the numbers that we, um, you know, our vaccination numbers that we, that we have. We do continue to um, meet and partner with our hospital providers. Um, I know in the northern counties, um, the Munson healthcare system, um, the vaccine that the hospitals are receiving, they are pushing out to their uh, primary care offices to vaccinate small numbers of individuals in that 65 plus age group um, in the community. Um, we also, you know, I'm not sure what spectrum, I'm, I'm not sure what 
what Spectrum is doing. They haven't indicated that, although we will meet with them tomorrow, so maybe I'll have more information um, at that part. We do um, you know, have a weekly call with Spectrum, with Munson. Um, we also have a weekly call with our, um, you know, with Kalkaska, those hospital folks, um, to kind of talk about this and make sure we're kind of all on the same page and not tripping over, over each other as we um, attempt to vaccinate those individuals in our, in our community. Um, as we move into this phase where we'll be looking at doing offsite clinics, we will be uh, utilizing um, help from the National Guard as well as our other community partners. Um, you know, what I can say is we have had a wonderful response from the community in terms of volunteers. Yes, you know, some counties we have more than others, but, um, you know, regardless in all counties, we have had people from the community step up and, and express a willingness to help in all different roles, whether that be uh, those that are able to do vaccinations or those that are able to work maybe more of a registration type role or more of a support traffic type flow. Um, that is that has helped us to um, you know get to the point of, of you know being able to vaccinate these larger numbers of, of individuals and it'll become essential um, to helping us vaccinate larger numbers of individuals as we continue to um, to move forward so um, as I said we're kind of retooling our, our registration type process um, you know looking at at um, going to more of a hybrid type of a model where, um, you know, we're trying to assure that we can put a secure link out there that individuals can go to and sign up for clinic appointments, while at the same time recognizing that we currently do have a waiting list and we need to, to make sure that we are, um, you know, moving those people off that waiting list into, into the uh, vaccination clinics. So, you know, it'll be a hybrid where, you know, some folks will be able to, to sign up online, whereas others we'll still kind of go old school and be contacting people um, to get them signed up for, for vaccinations. And that will most likely continue for, um, for some time as, as we move forward. Um, again, the current groups that we're vaccinating are gonna be those healthcare providers, long-term care facilities and our AFC homes, and then the 65 and up population, and then those frontline first responders, that includes our firefighters, uh, police, both state and local, corrections and county jail workers, childcare, uh, pre-K through 12 teachers, and those staff in schools who have direct contact with students, um, adult and child protective service workers, and then the homeless shelter uh, staff. And now new to that is gonna be the food processing facilities and agricultural sites. Um, and those agricultural sites really are gonna be aimed at trying to get those um, with seasonal or migrant laborers um, you may remember that we had quite a few outbreaks in our seasonal farms and migrant housing um, farms last year. So trying to kind of head that off before, um, you know, we get to that, we get to that point. Um, you may be hearing some information on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine um, and whether or not that will be uh, approved for use. That is a single dose uh, vaccine. What we're hearing is that um, potentially ASAP will be evaluating that the end of this month um, and then, um, you know, either approving it or, or not approving it for um, emergency use. If it is approved for emergency use, we are um, assuming that there will be some guidance in terms of the, the specific populations that this dose or that this vaccine may be used for. Um, you know, some of the things that have been talked about would be that uh, this could be a, a vaccine that would be excellent for um, our hospital partners that, you know, it's a single dose vaccine that they could use um, when they're discharging folks from the hospital who have not been vaccinated yet might be a, a, a good opportunity to utilize with that population. We're also thinking maybe our homeless uh, population that it's difficult to get them back in for a second dose. So maybe a one dose would be um, good for them. Another population that potentially could benefit from this would be the Amish population, provided we can, you know, convince that that population to be vaccinated. Uh, you know, two doses is tough enough. If we could do a single dose, it might be doable. So those are just some ideas of, of um, populations that that this dose, oh, and, and then any homebound population. This may be a, a vaccine that would be appropriate for, uh, for that population. So, we did uh, receive some guidance on earlier this week that uh, we are able to transport uh, vaccine 
now. So whereas before um, we were not able to do that, so that brought the question up of how actually can we get to homebound population, but now that it has been approved that we can transport vaccine um, and even vaccine that we have drawn a dose or two up from, you know, we'll now begin to move and, and vaccinate that homebound uh, population. So a lot of things on, a lot of moving pieces related to vaccine vaccination um, and, and getting that, that done. Um, again, even though we are seeing a little, you know, a little more vaccine into the jurisdiction, um, you know, it's it's still not not a whole lot. Um, you know, it's it's a little more than 100 doses per county, a little more than 200 doses per county, but not much more than than 300 doses per county at this point for first doses. So, um, still just you know asking for patience of everybody, and and we will get through the groups and um, you know get everybody vaccinated as quickly um as we can so i think that is the vaccination information that i have brett i don't know if you have anything else that you would like to add no i don't think so okay i don't know if there's specific questions out there that people have we don't have any right now Well, it looks like a couple popped up, maybe. Oh, you're right. I had my uh, my bar was down lower. I had to raise it up. So yes, we got uh, Deborah's first. Hi, this is Deborah, and I'm wondering on the new um, recommendations for quarantine after fully vaccination. You don't have to uh, quarantine if you're exposed. Does that include for travel, flying, that kind of thing? Um, the, the guidance refers to those individuals that would be identified as a close contact. That's the, the change in quarantine guidance relates to only those people that have been, um, for, you know, that would be identified as a close contact. So if, if it has been, um, two weeks or more since you received the second dose of a two dose series or two weeks or more since you received, um, the initial dose of a one dose series, and no longer than three months since that, if you are identified as a close contact, then you would not, you don't, you do not need to quarantine if you're identified as that, as a close contact. I have not seen anything related to travel and, and where that may play in into that yet. Thank you. Next is Jim. Yeah, hello, hey, Kevin. I'm sure glad to see, as, as well as everyone else, that the uh, things are starting to improve with the more vaccines that are being distributed. And I know you've talked about uh, setting up a couple remote sites, and you've got your chain of command set up. And and what makes me nervous is once that vial is tapped, you know, you have to distribute it, uh, all those shots that are in there, and are we still going to be working with our uh, emergency management directors, as in Abby uh, Watkins here in Nuevo County, to make sure we get uh, all of those distributed? Yeah, Jim, the possibility exists that we do that. For each of our clinics, though, we do have a, a, a standby list or a call list that we work from. So if, if we're doing a, you know, we have a, a list of individuals who may have missed their second previously missed their second dose of vaccine for whatever reason, um, or individuals that may be on a schedule for uh, the following day or the following week, that if we have extra doses of vaccine, we are able to utilize those lists to uh, call people in. If, if you know, obviously, if, if we're not successful with that, then yes, we would reach out to other avenues to get people in so that we're not wasting any of that vaccine. And, and knock on wood, so far, we've been pretty successful with that. Very good, very good, thank you. See you Friday. Yep, see you Friday. Uh, Stephanie, you're next. Uh, yeah, thank you. I just um, wanted to make a recommendation um, when registering uh, to receive the COVID vaccine for our younger um, population to make sure that um, we are not creating a new MICR account for the individual. Um, I'm here at the medical care and I'm finding that um, we're also updating immunization um, 
just looking at every employee's immunization record. So I'm having to pull up like their birth name and now like a married name to find um, their COVID information instead of that being combined on one. So um, just kind of, you know, thinking uh, as we reach out to the younger uh, population, some of them might have a MICR account under a different last name, and we should probably make sure that that's being brought together. Okay, I can, sh I will, I can pass that on with our, um, to our um, IMS coordinator and MICR staff, so that they're yeah. aware of that. Yeah. So um, one other thing too to, to talk about, um, that I forgot to mention, and this is the pharmacy vaccination program. Um, and again, this is this is a federal program. The state has no no control or or authority over this, but um, the feds um, have released vaccine to Myers, Rite Aid, and then the Cardinal Pharmacy Group, um, which is up in the UP. I think they have six or nine Snyder Pharmacy stores. Um, I know in our 10 county jurisdiction, some of our uh, Rite Aid stores are vaccinating individuals, as well as some of our Meyer stores are, are reaching out and vaccinating um, some individuals. Um, I have had communication with the Rite Aid stores to assure that, um, you know, what they're, when they're giving a first dose of vaccine, that they're also um, scheduling those individuals for a second dose of vaccine, um, because we no longer, order uh, vaccine, first or second dose, it's allotted to us. And so um, our second doses are based on the number of first doses that we have, that we have, are giving. So if someone, um, you know, gets their first dose elsewhere and then comes to the health department for a second dose of vaccine, there is no guarantee that we can provide the, that individual with a dose of vaccine because we may, we just may not have one available to them. So. Um, we are directing uh, those individuals to go back to where they received their first dose of vaccine. And Rite Aid did assure me that when individuals are getting their first vaccine, they're scheduling them for their second vaccine appointment at that same time. So should not be an issue. Um, I've not heard back from Myers yet, but I'm assuming that hopefully um, that, you know, it will be the same um, process with them so that we don't run into any issues. I do anticipate that we, you know, we may have some uh, problems when uh, we have snowbirds that are going to start to return who may have gotten a vaccine down south and then, you know, trying to come back up here. Um, and so, you know, we're trying to do what we can to kind of plan for that, but um, there's really not a whole lot other than to hope you have an extra second dose of, of vaccine um, available that we may be able to provide to them. So just wanted to to put that out there. Anybody on the phone that has a question? And Jim, I see you still have your hand raised. Is that from your other question or uh, do you have a new one? Might be his first question still. Yep. <laughs> and I don't see any more right now, Kevin. Okay. Um, Jordan, anything else that you'd like to share? No, nothing else. Things are looking okay. good. So hopefully we continue that way. Cool. Um, Sarah, I don't know if you're on, if, if you are, if there's anything regarding um, scheduling or planning that you'd like to share. I'm not sure if she was able to get on or not. And Brett, anything else that you'd like to share? Nope, I think I'm good. Okay, then that is everything that that I have to share for today. Um, you know, if if after today you have a question, don't hesitate to email it to us and or reach out and let me know. I'll get an answer to you and then I'll share that answer back with the rest of the group. Um, we'll plan on reconvening next Tuesday again, uh, unless for some reason we need to pull the group together before that to share some information with you. Um, and other than that, one last opportunity for questions. All right, if not, then thanks guys for taking time to hop on the update call with us and we will talk with you next week, Tuesday. Have a good day, guys. <laughs>